Right. Um, it's a great pleasure for me to be here, and I'm supposed to be talking about partnerships, cooperation, collaborations, and I'm adding associations to that because that seems like a topic of the day, too, for us. And I'd like to just tell you a little bit about my background, too. Um, I'm a professor at the University of Texas at the School of Information, which used to be the Graduate School of Library and Information Studies. So I was trained as a librarian, and now I work with people that do all kinds of information work, but primarily with, uh, I work with students who are going to be school librarians and youth librarians and public libraries. And I have to do a shout out to my biggest mentor, Blanche Wolls, who I've known for 39 years, and I think Blanche has been mentoring me all that time. Thank you, Blanche. And I'd like to tell you a couple other things that I have done. Um, I was in a uh, delegation in 1989 to, from the U.S. to the USSR, from Moscow and Kiev, about children's literature and libraries. And so that was really interesting and got me kind of in your neighborhood, not exactly, but some. And I've also been president of a couple of national associations in the U.S. The Association for Library Service to Children a division of the American Library Association that gives out the Caldecott and the Newberry Awards, <coughs> among other things, mostly people who work with children in school and public libraries that are interested in their reading. Also, um, I've been president of the Beta Phi Mu National Honorary Society, which was kind of an interesting experience and on the Texas Library Association, which is a chapter of the American Library Association. And I was um, president of that the same year Barbara Ford was president of ALA, and we had complementary themes, local um, touch, global reach, because Texas, as you probably all know, is right next door to Mexico. So we have a very long international border, and a lot of um, people that, don't speak English, a lot of Spanish-speaking people there. So that, that tells you a little bit more about my background. What I was doing this summer was um, supervising capstones or culminating experiences for our students who were getting master's degrees. And that ranged all the way from some students who were cataloging Incanabula of an early printer from um, Venice to people who were digitizing all kinds of different, we have a lot of digitizing going on in Austin, Texas right now. And um, one of the interesting projects was African American folk music from the 30s that uh, they had an eight track tape and they were changing it over to digitized music, so that, that was another one. I can't say that I'm an expert in either of those areas, but it was fun to work with the students who were doing those projects, and there were a lot of other interesting kinds of projects, too. Something else that some of you know about me is that I spent two summers at Apple in 2004 and 2005, and I was just curious, are there any students here who were in either one of those groups? 2004, 2005. Well, it was a great introduction for, to Lithuania. Yes, hello. I'm very glad and I was very delighted to be able to come back. So that was fun. Well, getting on to my topic, which I should be timekeeping. You've got your little bell. <laughs> okay. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit, as I said, about the cooperation and the sharing of ideas. And how I went about collecting this, I didn't want to get into a lot of uh, data and statistics and things at this point in the afternoon. I know some of you are probably having trouble keeping awake after lunch, but I thought you might enjoy um, hearing something about how libraries in the United States work together on a lot of different levels. 
public libraries and school libraries, we all need help. We're, we don't have enough staff. We don't have enough money for all the collection goodies that we would like to have. And as this, the Gabrielle um, mentioned just a while ago about having more technology in the library, more materials that the students and the youth would like to have. We need all that, so we try to help each other. And um, some of the things that we can share, for instance, we have summer reading programs because our schools have quite a long vacation in the summer and the students, we encourage students to read because it helps them maintain their reading levels while they're not in school. So sometimes when public libraries are running school um, summer reading programs, the school libraries that are closed in the summer will lend their materials to the public libraries to share with the students. If the school libraries are locked up, but the public libraries are open, they can take some of the books over to the public libraries and they can let the kiddos read them while they're, they're not in school. Good idea. I was just out in Portland, Oregon before I came here to spend some time with my two grandchildren, a nine-year-old boy who does not like to read too much, but I took him to the public library, and he loves Garfield. That's one of our comic characters. And so, um, I don't know if his mother was too happy, but I was happy that he was reading something. And we came home with our armloads of Garfield. His sister, on the other hand, is 14, and you have to tell her to stop reading. So we'd come home with armloads and armloads of teenage literature. And the public library was helping both of them and thousands of other kiddos keeping their reading levels up. So that's a good sharing thing that you can do. Don't be afraid to ask the librarian, the closest one to you, even if it's a different type, if they will share their materials with you. Um, of course, that, would, that could go on with all different levels, picture books, beginning readers for kindergarten through second grade, juvenile fiction, um, young adult fiction, juvenile nonfiction, all those different kinds of materials. You can also share your youth reference collections, encyclopedias, dictionaries, any kind of reference materials that you have, and, and media too, of course, magazines, any materials that you have that you could share or de develop. You could buy some of the things and another library could buy something else and then you could share that material. Um, one of the areas that we are doing somewhat in the States is sharing digital databases. Unfortunately, with the hard times, this hasn't been as fruitful as it had been, but whole states would negotiate for a license for the state, and then each library in the state would have to pay a lot less to get access to that database. So that is a very good reason for you all to think about association and getting materials, because if you're a bigger group, then maybe you can negotiate with your vendors and not have to pay as much per library for those resources. I don't know if you've thought about that or not, but it might be something to put on your list if you haven't. Programs for preschool and early school. Um, we know that this is an extremely important area. When I was a child, many decades ago, they didn't really let kiddos take books out until they could read. But now we encourage people to read to their babies even before they are born, so they get the sound of the language. You can't start too early. And um, the things that the Association for Library Service to Children did is have a program called Born to Read where gift bags were given to babies in hospitals and in, the moms and dads were encouraged to take their, a little coupon to the library to get a free book and a library card. 
you can encourage that in your preschools, in your daycares, and your public libraries. And that will get kids reading and on the path to literacy at a very early age. Um, having preschools story times. Um, my granddaughter, for instance, and lots of other children go to what they call lap sits, where you take your baby and the caregiver has to stay and have the baby sit on the lap and listen to the story, learn the, the music like Twinkle Twinkle Little Star or little songs and, and listen to stories so they get used to coming to the library and know the library is fun at a very early age. And certainly schools and public libraries can both participate in that. Um, another thing that you can do together is share themes. And I've got just a few little themes here. For instance, Magnificent Me, Farm Animals. You can develop programs. You might want to make story kits and put the books and like the puppets or the music the songs that you would go along with a certain theme and then pass them around to different libraries. That would be a good cooperation project. That would be a good sharing that you could do that your work would be spread around and you wouldn't just get that out once a year or twice a year. Somebody else could be using it in the meantime so that you'd have help and somebody else would have help planning your programming. Another area, service for parents and teachers, any kind of caregivers or people that work with children. Um, libraries can provide advisory services on selection of books and materials for children of all ages. Um, also can provide presentations on library services for groups to teachers, parents, and caregivers. Um, one of the programs that I think is really interesting is at San Antonio Public Library for years. They've had a special program for what we call teen parents. Girls that um, get pregnant before they're married, they're probably still in school. We try to keep them in school so that they can keep learning and be better parents. But a lot of times they're not really prepared to be parents. So that the library has a program that teaches those young women who already are having small children, we call that children having children, but we want them to be the best moms and parents <coughs> that they can be. And so we try to teach them what's important in their care for increasing the literacy of their children, teaching them ways to read to their children, how to use the library, to get their children interested in education. Um, certainly, if there was a program like that that you could develop or that you knew about, you could encourage, encourage um, anybody in your area to participate in that to increase your kids' literacy levels too. So that's another service that libraries can share and talk about, collaborate on. Class and group visits to libraries. Parents, um, teachers, community groups can request visits to different libraries, field trips, tours, story programs, information programs. Um, when I attended the American Library Association Midwinter Conference in Dallas in January, the Freedom to Read Foundation, which is one of our units, had a program to raise money. It was a fundraiser, but it was what I would call a wildly popular young adult author named John Green, who's also a blogger. And he has, um, he's published a number of very popular books. And he was coming, he, he, in his blog, and he blogs with his brother too, was talking about the book ahead of time, and the publishers got so many free publishing um, orders for, his, for John Green's books that they pushed up the publication date. And so that somebody who blogs like that and is really popular attracts teens. Well, I went to this fundraiser where he was speaking, and there were so many teens there, they just heard about it on the grapevine 
that the adults didn't have any place to sit until the president of the Freedom to Read Foundation came out and he said, if any of you would like to sit closer to the author, you can come and sit up on the stage. Well, there was a sound kind of like the wind coming. Whoosh. All the teens were there. There were lots of seats for the adults. Um, this was something that, it was kind of a cooperative effort of a, a very popular author coming, giving his time to raise money to defend libraries and protect libraries. And it also was a really fun thing for the, the teens that were there, the young adults, because they could um, hear this author and get his autograph talked in. I think he, I didn't stay up half the night, but I think he stayed half the night talking with them. So that you can combine activities like that, and a lot of different libraries and librarians participated. So that was another um, activity that was really fun and promoted libraries. And I think you can kind of tell when I'm talking about these different ideas that I'm also talking about advocacy. That, and it's my strong belief that if you work with other people in a cooperative way, whether it's in your local governmental lobbying advocacy, in your professional association advocacy, that you're a lot stronger than if you're just doing it as one person. Not that one person can't do a lot, but it's like sticks. If you just have one stick and you bang it against something, it's easy to break. But if you put, tie together a lot of sticks and you bang it against something, it's much stronger. And I think a professional association kind of stands that way too. Much stronger pressure to get what you need to be a really good library. And especially go for the goal of having your students be successful, which I think is the bottom line for all of us, if that's what we really want. Okay, homework centers. Homework is something that I think all schools have, all students have, if they're in a halfway good school, and so that there are a lot of different formats that that can take. A lot of um, children are not in homes where they have parents or caregivers that can help them with their homework, but libraries can provide that to a certain extent. Aldana was talking about helping some of her students before school, after school, during school, get their homework done and in. And I think that's one of the jobs that librarians really need to take seriously and help students with. So you can do that in the library. Um, some of us do it online now. If you have a strong online and the, the kiddos have um, access to those, the technology that they can do their homework online, by telephone perhaps, recruit volunteers, recruit some of these great university students that might come out and help sometimes to help younger students do their homework, get paid tutors, sometimes libraries um, pay tutors from the teachers to go and work after school or come to the library and help students do their homework. So there are lots of ways that you can do this, but this could be a community group activity. It doesn't just have to be one type of library. And it helps when the schools tell the public libraries what the assignments are, because then they can get in on getting the right kind of resources to help the kids do their assignments too. So homework and homework centers is a key part of what school um, libraries can do to help their students succeed and their, there are ways to reach out and get others to help. Okay, and then another area that I've heard um, several of people talking about today is encouraging websites for kids, educational and fun websites, and there are lots of different things that go on to the websites. Um, as I said, one of my partial subjects is the um, children's literature and the books for teens, that kind of thing, so you can provide access to that, but you can provide access to all kinds of other things, too. In the U.S., our associations produce best books for youth, best books for children. 
those websites are a really big help on a continuing education for librarians because you don't always have time to do that, but you, but you can go to your association and as a committee or as a group you can do that on a year-to-year -year basis and then um, cooperate and share those websites. Challenge of get better ones for the next year. Another one is library literacy programs, and I've mentioned several different kinds before too, but the, from early childhood all the way through, we don't want to let children um, drop out of school so that they're not prepared to have a, have a job, have a career, have an education, so that there are lots of different things that, that we can do as libraries and working together to help students get through their homework, um, we have a huge, in Texas, we have a huge Spanish-speaking population as well as English-speaking, and that is an area that we really are working on. We haven't gotten to a perfect um, place in that yet, but trying to help children who are trying to learn English, trying to do their homework in Spanish or another language, and so that libraries do have, um, do have some programs that can help kids do that. Okay. And then the last one, we don't want to be old fogies all the time. I don't know if that, you know what that is, but we would like to be fun and games for kids too. We want the kids to come to the library because they like it. And I think we had two examples here of students that like to go to the library and had lots of wonderful suggestions for what to do. But we have game clubs. Um, some of our public libraries on the weekends teach kids how to, how to create games. The school libraries do that too. They have contests and they have competitions. and. They'll spend the whole weekend, the kids can come and play all different kinds of games, contests, um, also graphic book clubs for the YA films and writing clubs, so all kinds of other activities that promote literacy, not just um, written word literacy, but media literacy too, and have provide a positive way for kids to spend their time and to be learning. So, I hope I've given you a few ideas for um, cooperation and sharing and things that you can do working with kids and have a lot of fun in your library. I'm sorry, Barbara, I'd yes. like to remind you okay, I'm about done. this one. Okay. Yeah. All right. okay. Thank you very much. That's all right.